What's up guys, it's Mari here with First Updates Now. And on this episode of Behind the Bumpers, we're gonna be interviewing team 4206, the Robo Bikes, at the Amarillo event in the FIT district. So today we're gonna be talking about their robot and all of their cool custom 3D printed gears, their raised bar floor intake, and their cool design for their amp, as well as all the limelights and electrical stuff that goes into it. And with that, let's get into the video. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Okay, so you mentioned to me earlier that something about the raised bar made it have similar geometry to stuff like over the bumper um, intakes while also having the same protection as a floor intake. Do you want to elaborate on that to me? Yeah, sure thing. So how our robot is designed is we have our initial frame that is a certain size and then we have a extension that goes over that size in which the intake sits so it still maintains the advantages of an over the bumper intake namely how quickly it can do it and how easily it passes through to the shooter while still maintaining the benefits of a under the bumper intake, which is you can't get tech fouls from illegally entering another robot's frame perimeter. But our intake itself is just run by a Vortex motor that goes to a belt and then a series of gears that just reverse the direction of the second belt. So if this spins, one side spins clockwise, the other spins counterclockwise, and that passes our note into the shooter mechanism. So the shooter mechanism is completely separate from our intake mechanism. So we have another motor, Vortex motor right here, which is on a five to one gearbox, which is driving these two custom 3D printed gears right here. So they'll spin opposite to each other so that it's basically another intake. We call it the conveyor. So then the note will pass through the intake, hand off to the conveyor and then feed into our shooter wheels up here. And then up here we have uh, regular, uh, just two and a two and a half inch shooter wheels, uh, Colson wheels, and then on the bottom you can see here, this lower bar rotates. It'll flip up and down, so we can shoot from different uh, distances away from the speaker. And we did on purpose put two different size wheels on the bottom to try and get spin on the shooter. And these are independently driven by Vortex motors. Uh, so here's our amp mechanism. So this is how we score the amp. So this bar will just flip out. And this flap here will basically help funnel our notes as we shoot into the amp. And it's driven by a window motor on the other side here. And again, we have custom 3D printed gears uh, that we made. Like this one's custom. You see there's a cutout in the teeth right here so that we could get uh, the bars attached straight directly to the gear. So our next, two, our next two systems are the climber and then our pseudo elevator mechanism. As far as climber goes, we have a gearbox down here that takes a rope, passes into our climber, and that has a knot at the top that hooks into a bolt, which allows it to, if you release the pawl, it will feed up slowly, powered by these springs here, which are hooked into the inner bar by bolts that are probably sitting about here right now. Then we have a gusset plate holding that all stable and that hooks down to our chassis and then hooks into a second gusset plate here that supports between the climber and the remains of our elevator mechanism which we use to lift the shooter so we can access electrical underneath the shooter. 
Now, I understand that your robot has quite a few limelights on it. Is that helping out that shooter? Like, yes, is it is. Okay, so we have this limelight right here. This limelight is used for our interpolating tree table, which is in code. We set the robot up with the same kind of velocity. We are mostly just changing the angle to only change one variable, making it simpler. And every couple of inches, we scoot back from the speaker and we find the correct angle that it needs. So whenever we're out in an actual match and driving around, we don't have to have our co-pilot uh, press buttons to certain set positions. We have the limelight get the distance from the April tag and it auto adjusts our angle to be able to shoot the note into the speaker. We also have this limelight around on this side. So um, this competition, we are 100% using it. However, we use this limelight for AI detection with the notes, especially in auto. And what it does, it uses a Google Core. We don't have it on the robot right now. We're planning on using it hopefully for state or, uh, or later competitions. And what it does is it just picks up the note and we have our drivetrain um, rotate towards the note during auto to make sh to get as much accuracy with picking up the note. Uh, one more thing with the limelight, um, it might be easier on this side. So as you can see, we have adjustable limelight holders. So we have our design people um, design adjustable limelight holders because we need to figure out the correct positioning first. And then once we get that locked in, we go ahead and tell our design people the correct angle and we have our limelight set up. Thank you so much for talking about that. I always find it so cool with teams with their limelights. Now, on the topic of limelights, I heard that you guys have a three and a four no auto. And I'm assuming that the limelight does help in with that. So do you want to tell me a little bit about your process and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, so as Kelly mentioned before, uh, our limelight located on the back side of our robot helps uh, the robot auto pivot the uh, shooter so that we can shoot at the right distance. We use that in auto and in teleop, so it really helps me out as the driver whenever I'm going to shoot notes. Uh, so kind of our, uh, our robot process as the note goes through. So these, vor uh, these vortex motors, the intake and the conveyor, are both running duty cycle, which just means on a range of negative one to one of motor output. Uh, and then actually this beam brake right here, if you can pull back and see it, is, uh, is what helps our robot sense where it has the note. Uh, and once that beam brake uh, senses an activation, uh, the conveyors will run at a slow speed for like about half a second. And then the note will stop gradually like right here every single time. So that really helps us with our control flow of the note uh, and going more into the shooter. So both of these shooter motors, uh, top and bottom, are using PID control using built-in vortex uh, adjustment. And then also our pivot on the bottom, which allows the shooter to rotate, is also controlled by PID. And that relies on the interpolation tree table uh, that runs on the limelight. Uh, one other cool thing about a robot is our window motor on the AMP bar. Uh, it was actually a really cool program. We connected it to a uh, Spark Max right here, uh, and we just run duty cycle on that motor as well. And it's been working really well for our operator. Uh, it snaps really fast up, and then we have a faster setting going down so that uh, we can pass through the stage quickly and easily. Uh, our climber is also controlled by duty cycle just because we wanted our, our operator to have more control over the like the speed of the mechanism. So in that duty cycle, we do use joystick output. So it is uh, very easy for the operator con to control it. Uh, one thing we haven't mentioned so far is swerve. So we are running double Kraken SDS MK4 L4 swerve modules uh, with obviously a can coder. So it'd be one drive and one turn motor. Uh, these are controlled by the Swerve drivetrain class in our, uh, in our Swerve subsystem code. One final thing about the robot is our LEDs. So they're located on both sides of our front elevator rail when we lift the robot up. Basically, these front two LEDs will indicate our alliance colors so that we know we're connected and everything. 
in autonomous mode before the beginning of the match. These LEDs over here will turn green when our robot is in the right when our robot is in the right position to start the match. So this vortex keeps or uh, this limelight keeps track of our odometry, and then it communicates to the LEDs to turn green. Um, in teleop, whenever we're intaking the the LEDs turn white, and then whenever the beam brake senses a note, the LEDs turn green. Since it's a very like distinct color from white, it really helps me as a driver because uh, I'm actually colorblind, if you know. So my red and green uh, colorblindness is kind of insane. So whenever like there's a big difference in the light, uh, it really helps me out. And then one final thing about the LEDs is whenever the the shooters at the right velocity, they'll turn and flash blue. And so that helps me know when I when it's my time to shoot. I love that whole thing about the LEDs. I'm such a huge fan of people making aesthetic choices on their robots that are all so functional, but I am honestly a super huge fan of their robot design this year. And I can't wait to see them through the rest of the Amarillo event. Once again, this has been 4206, the Robo Bikes. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.